Hi all, let's move on to session two, an introduction to information system. Today we would be discussing regarding system and its characteristics. So when you look into the session objectives, we will quickly have a recap of system definition. We would see the characteristics of a system, components of a system and types of systems as well. So as we have seen in the previous class, a system is an orderly grouping in of interdependent components linked together according to a plan to achieve a specific objective. So when you talk about a system, a system would obviously consist of a lot of interdependent components which are connected together in order to perform a specific task. Now let's move on to the characteristics of a system. You have the following as the characteristics of the system that is likely to be discussed now. Organization, interaction, interdependence, objectives, standards, environment and feedback. Let's first start with organization. See, when you talk about the organization, it always deals with how the various components of the systems are organized or arranged. So this implies structure and order of the system. For example, the hierarchical relationship in a business organization or a system represents the organizational structure. Next, we would talk about interaction. So interaction is a procedure or the communication among the various systems or the subsystems that is present, components that is present inside the system. So when we talk about this particular interaction, every component or every subsystem needs to communicate with other subsystems or the components inside the system. So that is a protocol, a procedure upon which this could happen and this is actually taken care as a part of the interaction. Next comes the interdependence. So again, when we talk about the interdependence here, how various components of the system depend on each other. Output of one system may be the input of another system and so on. So how they are mutually integrated with one another deals with interdependence. Then is the objective. So what is the core objective of the system? For what we are using that system or for what that system is basically developed for is mainly the objectives of the system. Next is the standards. When we talk about the standards, what are the expected acceptable level of performance and what is expected to be in line with the system or considered as part of the standards. Now again, when we talk about the environment part of it, system adapting to a specific environment in which it is operating. A system operates within an environment, everything outside the system boundary. So basically the environment surrounds the system, both affecting it and being affected by it. So the environment of a university, for example, includes the students, the other stakeholders like parents, governing bodies, management, etc. Usually the system interacts with its environment. A university interacts with its prospective students by having an open houses or recruiting from local high schools or any other aspects of that. So all these things forms the environment and how do they adapt? How do the system that we have developed or using it adapt to the environment? Next is a feedback. So as you all know, feedback is very important in order to enhance the performance of any system. So similarly, the output would be observed and improved upon based on the feedback. So based on the feedback, corrective measures would be taken and it goes as an input to the system again with certain refinement. So these are the major characteristics of a system. So hope you understood the various characteristics here. And to repeat, organization is arrangement of the components. Interaction is how the subcomponents and the uh, subsystems would communicate. Interdependence is how they are dependent on one another for their functionality and for objectives deals with what is the core purpose of the system and standards is upon the certain acceptable level of performance, environment is how the surrounding aspects are taken into consideration and of course feedback is for continuous improvement. With this, let's move on to the components of the system. So as you all know, 
there are certain aspects which are considered as critical components of a system which includes input process output control mechanisms feedback and the environment so when you look into it let's first start with the input so it uh, we all know that the input to a system comes from again various sources so it involves capturing and assembling elements that enter the system that needs to be processed for example it could be a raw material it could be any text information numeric information it could be any labor any other kind of a data okay that is considered important to the system and that is required for the further processing is considered as an input now when we talk about the process process involves transformation of converting the input into the required output so basically when we talk about the data data gets transformed after a specific process or applying certain logic or step to the data to be converted to an information again the output involves transferring the elements into a desired outcome so after the transformation process whatever comes as an output is considered to be very vital and in case of an information system the data after the process becomes an output as information in between we do have the control components which help to take corrective actions if required to bring the system back towards the achievement towards a specific goal and it also helps in decision making next is the feedback the feedback component gives feedback on the performance of the system and it is mainly used for continuous improvement of the system next one is the environment a system does not exist in vacuum we all know that it coexist with other entities in the universe so several systems may share the same environment and here also the system that we are talking about needs to adapt to the environment in which it is existing so all these things forms a major components of a system so when you look into the diagram you could very well see that the input is a very first stage where it involves capturing of various information that is required for processing that particular task or towards accomplishment of the goal so input gets to the process stage and after it gets processed it becomes an output and in between there may be to and fro storage of those information before processing and after processing as well so when you look into the output here it again comes in terms of a feedback to the input session where it goes into a refinement activity and then again enters into the process this is how the complete system works now let us see various types of system so when you talk about various types of system we have physical or abstract system we have open and closed system man made system user machine system and deterministic and probabilistic system first let's discuss on the physical which is otherwise called as an empirical and an abstract system which is otherwise called as a conceptual system when we talk about physical or abstract system it deals with feel touch and see so which means that you could always feel that a particular system is existing you can use or touch upon that and you can see as well when we talk about an abstract system they are concerned with theoretical structure so they are systems of explanation and uh, when we talk about again this particular system only the required information that needs to be captured at that particular moment would be available and not in the entire details so when we talk about the next system the open and the closed system based on the degree of independence the open and the closeness of the system is decided and they are classified as well an open system is a one which interacts with its environment and it may have many interfaces with the environment also for example an educational system is always considered as an open system and when we talk about the closed system they will not have an interaction with the environment for example a payroll system in an organization may not have a openness to the outside society and it comes under the categorization of closed system 
Next is man-made system. So the system that are not available by nature or naturally that is not available comes under the categorization of man-made system. They are created by human beings and by machines. So which could be a formal, informal or a computer-based system. So when we again talk about man-made system, they are made with the purpose for which they are required to produce certain outcomes. So they must be related to any kind of artificial creation with the help of machines in order to accomplish a specific task. Now user machine systems, as I told you, it's a combined work of man and machine and we have a lot of examples on this, mainly onto your uh, kind of washing machine or any home appliances and so on and so forth. Next is the deterministic and the probabilistic system. So a deterministic system operates in a predictable manner. It's a system where input, process and output are known with certainty. If the given state of the system and all possible operations known, the next state may be determined or predicted. Hence, they are called as deterministic system. On the other hand, a probabilistic system is a one whose exact state at any given time cannot be predicted. An inventory system is an example of a probabilistic system. The average demand, average time for the arrival, etc. may be defined, but the exact value at any given time remains unknown in a probabilistic system. So these are the broad categorization of types of system. So with this, let's complete this particular session and we would catch up for the next session on the continuation of information system. Thank you all.